Hi, I'm Il Factor, music producer, celebrity music production coach, and founder of Miami Beat Academy. I've been producing music for a living for the past 16 years now, and I've been really privileged to work with so many different artists, such as Kelly Rowland, Jesse J, Jason Derulo, Sia, Kygo, and many, many more. Now, throughout those years, one of the most frequently asked questions that I get is, how do I go about producing my music from scratch? Well, I'm excited to be partnering up with Fader Pro to do exactly that. I want to walk you through my production process and show you how I go about producing a song from top to bottom. And I want to focus in on more on the why I'm doing certain things throughout my process rather than just the how I do those things. Now, we're going to be using Ableton Live 9 throughout this course. So to get the most out of this course, I would recommend that you also use the same version that we're going to be using. Also, I, I recommend that you block off some time and then eliminate all distractions. You know, don't check your emails, no tweeting, definitely no underwater basket weaving. But give some attention to the course while you're watching it. And feel free to hit pause at any time so that you can go over the lessons that I'm going to be sharing with you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now the song that we're going to be working on throughout this course is called Champion Sound. And it's a song that I produce that's currently being used for Ubisoft's gaming franchise, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Now originally, I had no intention of having this song placed on a video game. It was originally written for Verizon Wireless's Super Bowl campaign. And so I knew right off the bat that I was going to go for something anthemic, big, uh, you know, big dirty drums and things like that. And so when it didn't get used for that campaign, I just sent it off to a couple of people that I knew and lo and behold, Ubisoft loved it and said, hey, we would love for this to be the anthem for our new video game uh, franchise, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. And of course, I, you know, I jumped on the opportunity and said, yeah, sure, go right ahead and use it. And the second the game uh, trailer was announced, the, the song became a, a huge hit. And I just developed a huge fan base off of that just from that song itself. So I want to walk you through the process of how I put that song together in Ableton Live 9. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So after we recorded that initial beat, let's go ahead and layer those drums with some other sampled drums just to beef it up and give it the kind of sound that I'm looking for. This helps in the process of me creating a song because when I get things to sounding the way I really like them uh, to be sounding, then it just helps maintain that creative focus. And I'm not struggling with like, ah, you know, I don't really like that stuff, but um, I've maintained the discipline of like, hey, I can always go back and tweak it and get it sounding uh, right later on. So Anything that helps me reach the goal of writing the song is what I'm really focusing on right now. So let's go ahead and layer that beat uh, with some other drum sounds. So we're going to leave the live drums here. And I'm going to go ahead and name this because I kind of like being organized when I start working on stuff. So live drums. And we're going to repeat this process of loading a drum rack. So let's get over here to our drum category, our drum rack, drag and drop that. And now we have a second drum rack. Now, uh, for this one, we're going to do uh, some different types of samples, not a live drum kit, but we're going to go to our sample folder and I'm going to go into some of my big drum sounds because I just like how uh, these just fill up the space and they've got a nice bottom end and some grit to it. So we'll get the big kick, we'll drag and drop that here, same one, and we'll get this big snare, drag that here. And then I've got this tambourine that I'm going to drag and place. Well, I can just randomly place that here in F1. So let's preview those. So I've got all these hits there. I'm going to trigger them with my MIDI controller. OK. So now, instead of trying to replay the same beat, I want to make sure that the beats align with the same type of timing, the same quantizing. Uh, same velocity and everything like that. So what we're going to do is we're literally going to copy this clip that we've recorded here with the live drums by holding down Option, clicking and dragging over to this drum rack. We've made an identical copy. And so when we trigger this clip, we're now going to have these drums uh, play the same sequence as the live drums. So let's go ahead and do that now. Great. So you notice the same performance and the same thing. So uh, even if we've got this note here, the C sharp one that was being used in the live drums because there was a sample located on there, um, it'll just show up blank here. Since there's no sounds uh, assigned to that specific pad, 
we don't necessarily need to have that. So what I'm going to do now is layer this big snare with this tambourine hit, just to give that nice accent to that sound. Now, what I'd like you to notice is when I click this, uh, this big snare key on the piano roll, you'll notice a little moving dash line. And this lets you know that you're currently selecting all the notes that respond to that key or that, that keyboard on the, um, that keystroke in the piano roll. So now that all those notes are selected, I can easily just move them up to maybe another note or you know, position them right to the sound that I want to have. But if I wanted to layer that sound, we can just once again hold Option, click, and drag that up. So now that the snare and tambourine will hit at the same time. So let's go ahead and preview this by hitting the play button. That's cool. That's what we're looking for. So now I'm going to go ahead and maybe just lower this down in volume. We'll worry about the mix on the road, but just so I can hear a good balance between the two. Now, I want to talk about editing that tambourine hit. Now here's the tambourine here. Let's talk about editing the sample. So within the actual sample that we see here in the simpler, we can choose to determine how, how that sample will be played back. So if we adjust our sustain knob here, that means that the tambourine hit will, will be very short. And, and so if we maybe just open that up more, that means once it's triggered, it'll play for the whole duration of that sample. We can also lower the release so that it won't um, play for as long as uh, the, the note is, uh, you know, once I let go of the note that I've triggered it with, it'll stop the sample. So the way I look at it is sustain means that when you press the note down, how long does the sample get played? And when you let go of the note, release determines how long the sample gets played after the note is released. So I want a long release so that tambourine gets, see there, I let go of the MIDI note and the, the sample still plays. All right, now we're going to go ahead and process some of the drums using Ableton Live's audio effects. So what we're going to do is go to our browser. We're going to head over to the category where it says audio effects. We're going to click that and we're going to go ahead and choose some audio effects to, you know, beef up the sound and more or less just to shape the tonality of the drums to get them to sounding rocking and just really overall big so that the, you know, they'll, they'll fit the actual mood that we're looking for. So here we have a compressor. Let's start with that. I click that and drag that over uh, this channel. It doesn't matter where you drag it or you can drag it on the bottom here. And that'll add a compressor to the live drums. So let's just solo this channel so we can focus on just hearing the live drums being processed through this compressor. Now, without getting too crazy involved with explaining what compression does, let me just break it down simply what this compressor is doing to the drums. The compressor allows um, anything that passes the threshold that we set to come back down and level out and just even out the dynamics of the drums or any sound for that matter, so that you have a smooth, controlled, dynamic um, sound, overall sound, and that allows you to uh, you know, accent certain sounds. Uh, so for instance, let me, let, me, let me explain it this way. If the kick drum is this much louder than our snare drum, when I lower the threshold, it's going to level that kick drum and snare drum to be at the same volume. So that when I raise up the overall output, they're more unified in volume or dynamics. So this is a great way to have anything that might stick out volume wise or dynamic wise in that loop or that sound and allow me to control that dynamic and just overall and get an overall uh, balanced volume output from the compressor. So we're going to do that because I want to make sure that the snare isn't popping out way too loud from the kick and also this gives me a great way to add some punchiness and some attack to those drums as well. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I've been using my transition effects stems imported from my previous Champion Sound session to really give me a guide to know where I should be arranging um, my song. And I've, I've done this over and over again. This is a great tool to use for remixes and things like that because you can already have a great structured layout of where you know, drops should happen, breakdowns should be uh, you know, going on, and things like that. So I'd recommend doing this. It's a very helpful tool. 
and not, you can only, you don't have to just do this with transition effects, you can do this with anything. Um, you know, it could be previous recorded guitars or certain drums or loops that you might like to use. So you can add them to the browser and always use them for future upcoming sessions. So now that we've got our arrangement all laid out, um, according to my previous uh, original session, I'm going to go back to the chorus and now start adding some more musical elements to just beef it up. All right, now that we've got the arrangement laid out using our transition effect stems, I've now placed the verses where they belong, the bridge, the chorus, exactly uh, the way I've had it with a champion sound session. Now what I'm going to do is uh, bring in some of the vocals. I'm going to bring in the vocals that I use, and that's going to help me um, you know, solidify the chorus and the verses melodically. And so once I've got the vocals down, we can go ahead and start incorporating some more uh, musical elements to really just accent the chorus and the bridge. So just as I mentioned from importing uh, the transition effect stems, we went ahead and grabbed them from a pre-existing set that we've brought into the browser. I'm going to do the same thing um, by using uh, the vocal stems uh, from, uh, from this set over here. So I'm just going to grab the Ilvox and my backing tracks. Well, let's just start with this here, the main vocals here. I'll just drag that and put that into the session. And once I do that, not only will it bring the vocals where they need to be, but it also imports the processing and everything I've done um, a part of getting the vocals to sound the way I want it to. But uh, we'll, we'll come back to the vocals and the processing effect for them down the road. But right now, I'm just using that so I know melodically and structurally when I'm creating a song, uh, I really just work with the bulk, uh, you know, the basic bare bone materials like the, the drums, the bass, and I really don't like to incorporate a lot of that stuff because that gives me more room for me to move melodically with my vocals. And then once I've got that down, I can go ahead and incorporate some more musical elements. So let me just play back the vocals and make sure everything's lining up right. Now immediately when I'm playing this back, I notice one thing, and that is that our bass are actually in the wrong key. So that might happen sometimes, and you want to be able to fix this without having to you know, go through the whole arrangement and fixing all of these MIDI notes. So we've got the vocal in one key, and I know that's right because I recorded it to a previous session, but, but the basses are off. Let's head over to our MIDI effects category and use our pitch plugin to transpose the bass part so that it fits with the vocals. So let's grab the pitch plugin and drag and drop that over our Nova bass track. Now every MIDI effect plugin they use will be added to the very left side and before the instrument itself because it's MIDI and so it's altering the actual MIDI notes. So I know that I'm probably off. I started on E when I played it. So I need to go down two semitones. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just copy that pitch plugin, hold Option, and use that same setting for the analog or the sub bass. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and rename that sub bass. So now both the MIDI uh, for the Nova bass and the sub bass have been fixed. Even though they're playing the original notes that we've recorded, they're now going to be transposed all across the board so I don't have to actually go through all the MIDI parts and fix them. So it's really a big time saver. Great. So now that we fixed the MIDI part, we can go ahead and just add a couple more elements into the chorus to kind of just bring it to life. Now we've just imported vocals into our session. So let me just spend a little time talking about vocals and, and how I went about tracking these vocals. Uh, the vocals that we're listening to in this song, well, that's, that's me actually recording the vocals. And I was under a time crunch, and out of just necessity, I just needed to record vocals. And I never had the confidence before, earlier in my years of producing music, to actually record my vocals just because, like everyone else, I really just didn't like the way I sounded. And so, you know, I always thought I sounded like a dying yak or something like that. So um, what I've done now is I've built the confidence to say, you know what, I have these great mel melodic ideas, so let me just put them down. And uh, worst case scenario, I can always have somebody else perform them. 
but you never want to leave the, the that spark of inspiration. You you know, if you have an idea, just just put it down. And so I'm going to walk you through some steps in the processing of those vocals to kind of get them to sound unique, fresh, and you know, um, comfortable for myself to even digest and say, hey, this is a good take. So let me go ahead and walk you through that now. So here we have the vocal in the session right, right where we left off. And uh, let me just go ahead and play that. So we'll double click the vocal track here. Let's solo that. Start from bottom. Yep, that's me. So it's pretty clean and bare. Now, one of the most important things when recording vocals is that you have a clean recording to work with. You want to have a, you know, um, and I'm, you, you don't need to go all out with a, you know, a five thousand dollar microphone. Uh, you could start with the bare minimum, and it's all in the performance. It's more of having a great performance always trumps really uh, intonation sometimes because tuning. And and you know uh, and rhythm stuff can be fixed and can be edited, but the performance and the actual character that's being portrayed through the vocals that can never be um, done through any type of plugin, no matter you know, no matter who you are. So I want to make sure that I was capturing that emotion, the angst and like that greediness. So you know, I took like a couple steps back. I started screaming into the mic, and, and those are the performances that I have. But let's talk about shaping these vocals to kind of fit the, the character of the track. So what I'm going to do is let's just highlight this verse part here. And let's start with the, the, the basic principles of the processing. So I'm going to start with a gate. Now, we mentioned and worked with a gate before in our drum rack with the loop. So I'm going to drag and drop that here. Now, the reason I'm using the gate is I want to uh, silence any part of audio that isn't going to be uh, heard, but might get um, might might get played through. If we're going to add some distortion later on, if you have any type of silence or any kind of humming or any low noise, when you run saturation or distortion on those vocals, those uh, elements get picked up and and can kind of uh, dirty up the the performance. So we're going to use a gate here, and this is the gate now. And like I said. <laughs> We need to lower this threshold so that whenever audio passes that orange line that we see here, then we are that audio will be heard. But whenever we actually have audio that's below that line, then that audio ceases to be heard. So here's an example. Start from bottom. So you see how I started from the bottom. We've got that little breath that I take there. Well, I don't want that breath to come through. So the gate helps that the breath to, to no longer be heard, and just the actual uh, lyrics that I'm saying. Start from bottom. So in order to not have choppy or robotic sounding uh, vocals through a gate, you want to just increase the release a little bit so that the gate uh, takes its time letting go of the actual performance. Start from bottom. Just to go to the top. There you go. And I'll just increase the hold a little bit more. And that's going to allow the gate to just open up and uh, not have any harsh transition from closing and opening on the actual performance. OK, so now that we've got a gate, let's go ahead and compress the vocal. The reason why I definitely want to compress a vocal, because the vocal is the most dynamic instrument ever to be recorded. As you can even see visually, we have this first part here of the vocal You know, seems to be a little bit uh, uh, Average, OK, and then this is OK. And then this just spikes up and gets louder here. And then we have this performance, which is a little bit duller or you know, lower in volume or dynamics. And then this one gets a little louder. So vocals are naturally very dynamic. You, know, you start talking, la, 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 and then you get soft. So we want to be able to control those dynamics. And we can do that really well with a compressor so that I can have a well-balanced volume overall to, to, to set forth in the mix. So let's go ahead and see where the threshold is. So you can see that that right there is at the, the you know, kind of like the peak. And so there's different modes in this compression. And so we'll use this mode, which looks similar to like the, the gate over here. And I like this because you can visually see the compressor in action. So if I, uh, we lower the threshold. You can see 
what the compressor is actually visually doing. It's taking anything that passes that threshold line and it's reducing that so that it stays beneath this orange line. So just think of it about, you know, like I mentioned before, like the ceiling, right? And you have two people in the room. One's about seven feet tall, another person's three feet tall. Well, when the ceiling starts to lower down, the guy who's seven feet tall has to kind of bend down his knees and, and just, you know, start growing smaller and smaller while the guy who's three feet tall, he's not doing any growing at all. It's just that the guy who's taller is now just you know, scrunching down to his level. So that's what the compressor is doing. It's just bringing that ceiling down, that threshold, and just making anything that passes that threshold meet at the same uh, dynamic level as anything already set there. So uh, without going too deep into it, that's, that's what we're doing here. So let's get some. So I'm going to maybe give it a good medium ratio, four to three. Uh, definitely like some, some good strong compression on the vocal. All right, and now the attack. Uh, well, if I put a quick attack on the vocal compression, Struggles, yeah, get I might just eliminate a lot of that punchiness or the initial attack of my vocal performance. So I want it to be aggressive. I don't want um, very, you know, I don't want, you know, soft, uh, subtle vocals. So if I want more aggressive vocals, let's just have like more medium attack. Struggles, yeah, get and then we'll have the release uh, follow that as well. Struggles. Now, this compressor has the auto option, and this auto option allows you to have the release automatically set to when it would actually let go or uh, function as releasing for that compressor. What I mean is this. Let the compressor automatically detect when it should release um, from that audio signal. Struggles, yeah, get em. It could be slow, it could be medium. Stop. So I'll just leave it there for right now, because then, it, you know, um, I kind of like the setting that it's at right, right there. So once I've done some compression, Struggles, yeah, get we'll just but boost I'm the vocal up a little. Stop. Next, we're going to use an EQ. And the EQ is just really to carve out any frequencies that we don't want from this vocal. Struggles, yeah, get We've got all this low end frequency here. Double tap that to view this. And I want to show you something very unique about this EQ. That it's, an, it's a tool that I like using a lot. 